Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for King Faisal University students and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 7 in this series entitled Match Statements in ASP.NET 4.5 using C Sharp. Some of the most often used data types in C Sharp are byte, int, short, long, float, double, decimal, car, string, datetime, and bool. To declare a variable, you need to start with the data type followed by the variable, and it must be terminated by a semicolon. To convert values, we can use convert method or parse method. For example, if you want to convert a string value to double, we can use double.parse string value or convert to double and then the string value. The basic arithmetic operators are star or asterisk for multiplication, slash for division, percent for modulo division, plus for addition, and minus for subtractions. For other functions, you may use the math class, like you get the absolute value, the floor and the ceiling value, the minimum or the maximum between two values, the power, some trigonometric functions, and even the values for e and pi. Let's proceed with activity number 6 where we will create an ASP.NET website and place it in CASP activity 6. We will create an ASP.NET web form named Basic Math that contains two text boxes for two numeric inputs, four buttons for the four basic math operators, and a label for the result. We will create events for the four buttons for their respective computations. Let's create our website, file, new website. We'll put it in folder activity 6. And we will create our first web form. We'll call it basic math. Let's go to the design view. I'll first type some text like first number. And then I'll double tick text box, enter second and number, and again I'll double click, click the second text box. Now we will put the place we will place the four buttons one, two, three, four, and at the end I'll just again write some text, the result, and then the label object. Let's change the text properties of the button for button 1. Let's make it the plus sign. For button 2, the minus sign. For button 3, the star or the multiplication symbol. And for button 4, the slash for division. Now we're ready to put some events. Let's start with the first button for addition. So that our code will not be that messy, we'll declare a variable right after the, de the class declaration. We'll declare two variables, n1 and n2. They will hold the numeric equivalent of the values that we're going to enter in the text boxes. So this is button 1. We're trying to get the sum of the two numbers. First, let's convert uh, those string values to numeric, to double. Let's use first convert to, convert to. Later, we'll use parse convert dot to double. The value in text box one dot text. The same thing for n2. We will use convert to. To double the value inside text box to that text. Okay, now that we have the numeric um, equivalent of the numbers, uh, we can already add them, and the result will be placed in label one that text <coughs> is equal to n1 plus n2. But, of course, the result is numeric, but to, to put it in label 1 that text, we have to convert it to string. So again, we'll use convert 
dot to string and we'll put parenthesis for n1 and n2 and semicolon that's it now let's go back to our web web page and create a second event for minus this time we will use parse so you can see the difference we will parse uh, the value in text box text box 1.txt the result should be double so it's double that parse the value in text box 1.txt also for n2 we will use double capital that parse it's text box two that text okay the result the same we will put them in label one that text is equal to uh, n1 plus n2 but again these are numbers so to convert them, we will use the other converter to string method, to string. I think that's it. It's correct. So we can use uh, the small d or the capital D. Let's move to the third one for the multiplication. This time I'll just copy and simply change the operator to multiplication ah uh, uh, before I forget this one should be minus there's a second button and the last one is for the division again we use division that's it let's try to look at the result in our browser so if I have numbers like 2.76 and 1.76765 if I add them if I subtract them, if I multiply them, and if I divide them, these are the answer. Good job. Let's continue with activity number seven, where we will create an ASP.NET website and place it in CASP activity seven. We will create a, a web form named Math Functions that contains one text box for the numeric input, five buttons for ceiling, floor, cosine, sine, and tangent values, and a label for the result. We will create events for the five buttons for their respective computations. Let's create our new website. File, new, website. We'll put it in folder activity seven. Okay. We'll create one web form and we'll call it mat functions. We'll go to the design view where we will put a text box. Five buttons, one, two, three, four, five. And a label for the result. We'll try to change the text properties of each button. The first one is the floor. Second is the ceiling. I think I interchanged them, but I guess it doesn't matter. The third is for the cosine. Sine. And tangent. Now we're ready for the events. So again, uh, why don't we try a straight uh, code for the the method without using any variable? Okay, the result will be placed in label one dot text, and of course we have to convert the value that is in text box one dot text. We have to convert it to 
a double. So let's use convert to double. We'll put parentheses. So now we have a number that is of double data type. Uh, we have to get the the floor of this number. So we'll use mat class and floor function. That's it. Then we have to convert it to string. So again, one parenthesis and another parenthesis. And again, we can use convert dot to string there. And we have to add it with semicolon. That's it. Now let's go to ceiling. I'll just copy again this formula. But this time, we're going to get the ceiling of the number. Let's go back to our web form. This time for the cosine. We'll just change it to COS to get the cosine. Then for the sine, there. And the last method, or the last button, is for the tangent. You can see here that we did not use any variable. We computed the value state and placed it the result to label one that text. Okay. Alas, <laughs> that's very easy. Let's try to see the result in our browser. Let's have a number like ninety point seventy six. What's the floor of that? It's ninety. The ceiling is ninety one. The cosine the sign and the tangent well done thank you for watching this video mass salama